For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech newscast. Coming up, the US residential PV lease market heats up, Korean firm supports 400 megawatt of projects to drive 700 million US dollars into Texan economy, and the EU likely to proceed with anti-dumping case against China. Already accounting for between 65 and 70% of residential PV installations in the US, Third-party financing has proved a huge success as it negates the need for high upfront costs often associated with solar installations. Investment bank Credit Suisse has committed 300 million US dollars to two of the leading PV installers, Sunrun and SolarCity. That's a model that looks set to continue its high growth trajectory. The bank has provided 200 million US dollars to Sunrun and 100 million to SolarCity for residential and commercial PV projects. Credit Suisse had previously made 100 million in capital available to Solar City. According to a recent report from GTM Research, Sunrun had 37% of the third party residential market in the US in the first quarter of this year. Solar City had 20%. The market research firm noted module manufacturer Yingli Green had been a major supplier to Solar City and had a 10% market share of the US residential market in the same period. However, the US residential market leader was SunPower with a 22% share, and the second largest share was held by SunTech with 12%. In related news, the number of small-scale PV installations in the sub-500 kilowatt range is also expanding rapidly in the States, according to the latest NPD SolarBuzz United States Deal Tracker report. This latest report highlights the progress of over 3,300 projects that are currently in various stages of construction. The firm identified that the market segment was characterized by schools, municipal buildings, zoos, hospitals, retail outlets, and chains like IKEA, which has been systematically installing PV systems across its stores in the US. The top six state pipelines in megawatt terms were California, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Hawaii. Staying with the US and the utility scale PV pipeline currently stands at a whopping 32 gigawatt, according to GTM Research. Yet it looks like it will continue to expand after Korean firm OCI Company, known for being a leading polysilicon producer, signed a landmark deal with CPS Energy in San Antonio, Texas, to develop more than 400 megawatts of projects. The contracts are based on a 25-year power purchase agreement. OCI estimates the projects will create over 800 long-term jobs, drive an estimated 700 million US dollars in economic development each year, with 1 billion US dollars in construction investment. The financial reporting season is once again upon us, and the challenging market conditions continue to impact companies. Materials suppliers Wacker and STR Holdings warned of lower sales due to price declines and weaker demand. Wacker's polysilicon sales declined 22% in the second quarter as revenue fell to 286.8 million euros. Module backsheet supplier STR Holdings revised down second quarter revenue to approximately 25 million US dollars. German-based PV systems supplier Sunways said its sales declined by 50% last year to 116.2 million euros. The company is now majority owned by LDK Solar. Major equipment supplier Meyerberger posted preliminary first half sales of 255 million euros, while posting a negative operating cash flow of approximately 83 million euros. REC reported a 13% increase in sales for the second quarter of 2012. Revenue reached 327 million US dollars and sales improved in the quarter, but the company was impacted by impairment charges for the closure of its wafer operations in Norway. REC has reported a quarterly loss of 674 million dollars. 
In other related financial news, Frank Asbeck, the founder and CEO of SolarWorld, is waiving his salary, around half a million euros last year, until the company returns to profitability. Asbeck will also forgo dividends during the same period, though the company didn't say when it would return to profitability or on what basis profitability status would be met. And finally, stocks in Chinese companies have been under increasing pressure following reports that SolarWorld's anti-dumping case against Chinese OEMs is progressing to the EU. Earlier this week, German Environment Minister Peter Altmaier offered the government support to German solar companies' efforts to launch AD proceedings in the EU against Chinese PV manufacturers. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. Don't forget you can keep up to date on pv-tech.org and follow us on Twitter at PVTech. See you next week.